Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about transition from the British Army into civilian life. So I'm not going to cover everything in this video because it will be an awful lot. I will be doing videos over the next year just to let you know how the process goes and how it goes for me and any sort of tips and advice I can pass on to you. And today I'm just going to pass on a few on more of the process at the beginning um, of when to leave, uh, how to leave and what sort of to do to get on courses and how I feel is the best way of doing it because everyone leaves at different periods of time and everyone has their own sorts of opinions when you should leave. You will speak to a lot of people that will say, don't bother leaving just yet. Leave at the end of the army career, you get a great pension, which you do, even though the pension is changing, it is still pretty much one of the best pensions that are out there. But if it's not for you and you want to leave at some point, then you need to make that decision to leave. There's no point being in a job um, that you don't really want to be in anymore. Like I said, I'm leaving to go into another hobby. This has been a passion and hobby of mine. I've wanted to join since I was like 11 years old, if not sooner. And I've sort of been coaching and helping people and been doing YouTube on the side. It's sort of taken off. So why not progress that, go a little bit deeper into that, but join the reserves and still get to be part of the army, still get to do some of it, but also get to do more of this because that's what I enjoy as well and I've done the army for so long now. I had to make the decision now because you sort of get not stuck in a rut but you get to a point for different points throughout your career where you really shouldn't leave and you shouldn't. So my personal opinion is I think everyone should do a minimum of four years. I think it's great you get to do so much um, great life experiences. It just helps you as a person but you don't want to leave at certain points because you will miss out on certain benefits. So, if you're going to leave, I always recommend that you either leave around your four or five year period in the middle of your career, so halfway, or push it all the way towards your 22, 24 years. And definitely do it. The Army is a great career. There's many possibilities out there, so many benefits. You get that great pension at the end, you get to travel the world, and you basically get to shoot things, blow stuff up in simple terms, drive big tanks, um, if that's how you're, what you want to do. Basically, you get paid to do all of that. You get to pay to go to travel, you get paid to go on event training, you get free dental, free medical. So there is loads of benefits and people are asking why I'm leaving, um, but I want to go and do something different and I can still do some of that in the reserves. But definitely a 22 year career. I know quite a few people doing it and who have done it and it's definitely something you should look at. But why I say you should live at, leave at the four or five year point, the midway point or, yeah. If you start getting six, seven, eight, nine years, you then get close to your halfway pension. So if you're at your six, seven, eight year point, I would just say stick it out, get to your 12 year point, and then get out. You get a nice lump sum for your resettlement, and you're also adding quite a bit onto your pension. So you get a tax-free lump sum. You've then built 12, 11, 12, 13 years onto your pension. So when you are older, you still have a nice lump sum and you still get a good monthly payment. Once you start going past 13, 14 years, you start hitting 15, 16, 17 years, you're then getting close to the 22 year point. It takes a year to get out. If you're getting out at 22 years, you get two years resettlement pretty much instead of one year. So it helps you transition. So if you're at 16, 17, 18 year point, by the time you get to your 19, 20, you're thinking about leaving and then you're going into your last two years and you're getting out and you get your full pension. So if you get your 14, 15, 16 years, I'd mostly recommend staying in and pushing it out. If you're at your four or five and you're not enjoying it, maybe push it out a little bit more. You know, if something might be around the corner, ask for a posting somewhere, don't just give up. Um, but if you're here at your seven, eight year point, stay in. It's not worth getting out right now. Honestly, it's really not. But this brings me on to my next point. If you are thinking about leaving, don't just go, it's rubbish, I'm not enjoying it, and then leave. Have something constructive to say. Have something to fall back on when you're getting out. But also try new things, like try a new job, try posting somewhere, transfer to a different regiment. Now, transfers never really were a thing in the 
past, especially before the 2000s, it was unheard of. The last five, six years, even longer, transfers are actually very big and they're very welcomed within the British Army. Uh, so transfer to a new trade corps regiment. Uh, but like I said, or just speak to your training command and be like, I'm not enjoying this job. Can I go to that troop, that company, um, battery, whatever it is you're in, can I go and try that job? Just retrain a little bit and see if I enjoy it then. Definitely try that before you leave. Don't just go, it's crap, I'm not enjoying this job, I'm gonna leave. Go and try a new trade, a new job, a new regiment. If you don't like it, then you can say, do you know what, I've tried other things, then I'll get out. Then you can say, I'll get out. But don't recommend getting out just before your halfway point or your full pension, there's literally no point. You are missing out on a massive bit of benefits, a good amount of money, um, which is then gonna help you out later on in life as well. Next part I want to come on to then is start your resettlement early. And when I say start your resettlement early, start thinking about leaving as soon as you join. I'm not saying think about leaving in four or five years, but if you're a 22 year career person, think about what you're going to do. Because the army, like I said, there is loads of benefits. It's great, you get to do so much. But once you leave the army, you can get a trade which you can take on to civilian life um, in certain job roles, but you might want to not might not want to do that. Okay, so and if you do want to do that, make sure you're getting civilian qualifications from that trade ready for when you leave, because not everything is transferable. In the army, you get great experience in absolutely everything: project managing, managing um, health and safety. If you're going down that sort of role, if you're engin engineers, you can get loads of trades. But double check that the trade you've got converts into a civilian qualification because gone are the days of just getting a job of experience now you need some sort of certificate to say that you can do that job so you can do that and I'm going to tell you sort of how you can do that but make sure this is like my biggest um, tip is think about it as soon as you join even if you just take up a hobby and do it in your own time, which I know a lot of people are, that's what I started doing was a bit of online coaching, a bit of personal training, fitness instructing, the YouTube. I know a few people now that are getting into photography on the side because they like doing photography. So they're doing all that sort of stuff. There's loads of sort of stuff that you could do out there that you can do um, on the side. And the army is good for that because either you're away really busy or you're in camp and it could be a little bit quiet and you're sitting in a room on your own in a block. Do something constructive and make the most of it. But make sure you get civilian qualifications, you're getting certificates for absolutely everything you do. You go on a course, ask them if you could transfer it into a civilian qualification. Even if you have to pay a little bit, pay it and get it. This brings me on to money. So you are entitled to certain credits or sort of money, um, sort of like, not bonuses, but money you can put towards courses each uh, year and depending on how you serve, how long you've served. So as soon as you join, everyone is entitled to £175 per tax year, so April to April, to spend on a course, pretty much any sort of course they want, but as long as it sort of benefits the army. You can come up with a lot of things. You can go get your forklift license, which is actually a good one to have. Forklifts can be used in many sort of sites and situations, so I know a lot of people can do that. I'm sure you could put it towards a photography course. If you're a PTI, you could go and put that money towards some sort of physical training course, like go and get yourself to be a kettlebell instructor or something like that, because it's going to benefit you as a PTI to then pass on to the blokes to give them better training. Photography course, especially now, if you're a recce soldier, guaranteed you'll get on a photography course. Um, but we're going for we're going into like this digital age now where you've got drones, you've got cameras. So you can go and spend that 175 pounds to get a decent drone course or a photography course, anything like that that's gonna aid you in your job, but it's also gonna help benefit you when you leave the army. You can go get a civilian qualification. It's 175 pounds per year. Um, you've got to basically put 20% of the money up. So the course is 175 pounds you put 20% up, they will pay the rest. If it's over, you'll get close to that 175 and then you put the 20%, okay? So you have to pay a minimum of 20% and uh, whatever's out of the 175 can be put towards courses. Every tax year, um, you can do that. You just need to, that reg you're automatically registered, you just get um, your paperwork for the course, hand it in, get it signed before you go on the course, go on the course, bring a certificate back, hand the paperwork in with a certificate and then the money goes to your bank account. So that's how you get that. 
you also get something called enhanced learning credits these are automatically um, assigned to you now you used to have to sign some paperwork but now as soon as the army you get them but they only become eligible after your six year period so between your six and eight year period you get three lump sums of a thousand pounds to spend on courses per tax year so april to april you get a thousand pound the course has got to be started between then you then once again have to contribute 20 percent minimum uh, and then next tax year if you wanted to do another thousand next tax year you can do another thousand if you leave between that six and eight year point i believe you get to use the enhanced learning credits for up to three years after you leave now it used to be 10 used to be five it's now three years over your eight year points that money doubles to two thousand pound per tax year so for me leaving i get three lump sums of two thousand pounds put towards courses which i'm doing i'm doing um, the first lot i put towards a level four structural conditioning course a level three gp referral course to help me with my online coaching and um, to help anyone who's looking to join the army or get fit so the business i've just set up that level four will now help improve my knowledge my skills my experiences to better my clients you can also put that money together as one lump sum and you could apply for further education or higher education and you can put it towards going to do a degree um, i believe i'm not 100 sure on this but it's either at open university uh, or you can just go and do a full-time degree when you leave the army uh, but that's basically you can place it all as long as you haven't spent any of it put it all together and that will go towards helping you get a degree so that and then what you also get when you leave so when you actually sign off you'll get something called irtc depending on how long you've served so for me i get the full amount that's 534 pounds i can put towards courses those lumps those bits of money can be put together in different ways standard learning credits can't be used with your enhanced learning credits standard learning can be used with your irtc and LCAS can be used with your IRTC, but your standard learning credits and your enhanced learning credits cannot be used together. So they're the three bits of money that I get. You get those two of them while you serve. I've been stupid enough and pretty much, I don't think I've ever used standard learning credits. Well over, nearly 2,000 pound most probably I could have spent on courses over the, over the years. Go and use them. Get, if, you, if you're unsure, just go to the education centre. They're your SMEs, okay? They're your subject matter experts. They know all about it. They will tell you what courses you can do, how you can justify it. So you have to put a justification on why you're doing that course. We've just had lads go and do mental health first aiders. It's one course I'm going to do this year. It's a great course to get on. 175 pounds. You have to contribute 45 pounds. I was going to get on it, but I had to isolate. So it's something I'm going to do in the future. Uh, if you want to go and do some other sort of first aid course, first aid at work, £175, you can go and use that to go and get first aid at work. Honestly, go and use it. Um, but yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about in this video. There will be more videos of this to come. Um, whenever I feel like I've got a bit of information, I feel like I should pass on to you. But the main bit I wanted to get across to you today, start your assessment as soon as you join, even if you're thinking of leaving in 22 years. Set yourself up. You don't have to join the army to get a trade in my personal opinion. I don't feel like you have to go and join the engineers or any other sort of really need to get a trade. A lot of people say you will. That's only if you want to do that trade when you leave. Okay, you might want to not want to do that trade when you leave, but it is a trade that you can fall back on because like I said, you gain a lot of experience in the army, but it's trying to put that into qualifications and competencies when you leave to a job. But I feel like I, not really got a trade within the two regiments i've been in i've got lots of civilian qualifications that i can use to go and get jobs but i'm going into a job that's completely different um, and it's i feel like i've set myself up correctly because i've gone and done it i've got the apparel companies so thank you for everyone who's purchased so far go and check it out that's called warrior apparel uh watch my previous video there is a discount code up to 40 percent off if you want to get 40 percent off um, I've got the fitness stuff, I've got the YouTube, you know, people going into photography, uh, there's people doing all sorts, okay, go and do it, think about it early, but do the full time if you want to, definitely, you get to do so much, it's just time for me to leave, so I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, give us a thumbs up, it really helps the video, click that subscription button, and I will see you soon, cheers.